Hey everybody, welcome to uh, the first edition of Frag and Unicorns Games uh, gameplay video. We are going to be going over the basics of a basic scenario gang war between the Flaming Skulls and the Valkyrs. Uh, I am Opti, and with me today is Apathy, which I don't know that we did on purpose. Um, Opti and Apathy, but... Uh, there we are, and we're going to be <laughs> facing off against each other. Uh, so, I want to get right into it, uh, since this is a gameplay video for Gangs of the Undercity, our first uh, skirmish war game. Uh, and so the first thing that we're going to do is choose a scenario. Uh, well, I guess before you choose a scenario, you would uh, choose your gang and you would build your gang, but that's for another video. So what we'll do first is we'll choose a scenario and we have chosen the scenario called Gang War. It's the more or less basic uh, gang versus gang scenario. So uh, here's the here's the uh, the flavor text for Gang War. In the undercity of Neo Babylon, rival gangs finally meet face to face with ambitions of turf and reputation on the line. They are willing to fight to the last. This clash can only end one way with one side eliminated. Uh, and with this map, we have... Oh, I should say also, before we get started, that I had hoped to maybe get a gameplay video that was uh, an actual game board with actual minis, but uh, we are under coronavirus quarantine. And so um, Apathy and a bunch of our crew have designed this amazing tabletop simulator game with uh, some of our... Uh, models on it and and they've created a nice cool board for us so we're gonna do it here for you instead uh, so the map should be about three feet by three feet uh, and recommended terrain should cover at least half the table which looks like we've got uh, one player takes play, takes turns placing terrain uh, we're gonna skip that bit so we can get right into it and we've already placed the terrain on the map but one thing we are going to do is each player must take one of these cyberlinks or the C links or we'd like to call them clinks and we're going to place those on the table. So Apathy, why don't you go first and place your clink where you want it. All right, so this is done before we um, decide which side we're on. So hmm. we've already decided which side we're on because of tabletop simulator. <laughs> it's already told well, us. No, Right, well, I could pick this oh, side. Oh, you could pick, pick the side, yeah, that's true. Right, because, yeah, anyway. That's just uh, yeah, I guess, I guess it's a good, that's a good point. If you pick it after, you're going to put it close to your side. So if you yeah. if you don't know which side you're going to be on, then uh, picking putting the side link somewhere is a little bit neutral. All right, well, I'm going to put it in here, but I need to... Gizmo tool out and slide it in nicely. And our cyber links are basically uh, standalone computer terminals that exist in the Undercity uh, and in the Overcity, but for our purposes in the Undercity. And they function as uh, dispensers of money and of uh, knickknacks and of paperwork and all kind of all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can make calls, you can get in touch with people, you can download documents, and you can interact with uh, different people. So they kind of function as a uh, as a catch-all, but there are a limited number of them in the Undercity, so they're always sort of fought over and they're always vandalized and otherwise tried to get broken into. So you're going to put yours there. I'm going to put mine a little bit further away so that they can't easily be accessed at the same time. And I'll stick it right there. Oh, All right. Upside down. <laughs> I just cut it, copy and paste it and dropped it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Now that the, uh, the cyber links or the clinks are set up, uh, each player rolls a die, and the player with the highest result gets to choose the edge of the table that they want to start in. There we go. So one die, a five. I got a three, so you pick. I will pick the side I'm on, because it's oh, easy that way. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, I'm taking my side, I guess, because there's no other options. 
All right. And then we're going to deploy our gangs within six inches of the table edge. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the uh, scenario says that I deploy mine first within six inches of the table edge. So the table edge is uh, not the turquoise bit, but the uh, the grassy bit with the terrain on it. So I'm going to start deploying my guys. And these each little tile that we have right there is uh, six inches, so it makes it really easy. So first off, I have Vengeance who is my leader. I'm going to stick him right behind this wall. And Snapper, who's my heavy uh, we're gunsman. We're supposed to do one at a time. Are we? That's uh, how I thought. All right. These, I, I wrote the scenarios a long time ago, and the rules have changed <laughs> in between. So Apathy's telling me we're, we're going to do one at a time. So we're going to do one at a time. Uh, there you go. I'm going to throw Sparrow up here, my little sniper rookie. Is that within six inches? Of the edge, yep. It's hard to tell by the building. Well, because the building is on this side of the... Are we doing six inches of the bottom edge or a flat edge on the whole side? Uh, I I read it as you pick an edge of the table, uh, and that's the edge of the table that you get to deploy on. Yeah, so the... If you look, the green tile would be the edge. So yeah. on the proper side of the green tile. I mean, I can move it back if you want. And is well, that I don't know. Let me see. Oh, I see. You're on that on that. Okay, you were putting it on the. From my perspective, it looked like you were putting it on the uh, the middle building. Oh gosh, no. Because like just because the the force perspective because of the um, the way the tabletop simulator was was showing it to me. And I was like, "Sir, that is that is certainly not <laughs> within six <laughs> inches. I don't know what you're doing." Uh, okay, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, all right. So next, I'm gonna grab Snapper, who is my ogre with a big gun, and I want a nice, um, I want a nice line of sight to shoot. So I'm gonna stick her right there. It's almost like we had a similar idea with our long range units. <laughs> Right, yours is up on the on the roof. I just need I just need mine to have a big wide open field of fire. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to take my breacher, which is our little hacker called Mordo, and he's going to hide. Oh, he can't hide there. He's going to hide right in this little spot. Actually, yeah, why not here? Come on, come on, model, move where I want you to. And yeah, let's go more. And uh, he also has a sniper rifle, by the way. Not okay. A sniper rifle, a normal rifle. Gotcha. I lucked out and got the luck of the dice, so I'm going to take Spur, who is my breacher, and I'm going to move him as close to this other cyberlink as I can get. That way, it'll be really easy for me to get to it on turn one. I will take, uh, who do I have? Oh, Ansa. Should I place Ansa? Yeah, I'm going to place Ansa. Ansa. The orange Ansa. team, by the way, is the Flaming Skulls, and the green are the Valkyrs. Yes. The Valkyrs are an all-elf gang. Yes. And the Flaming Skulls Which are... Makes them better. <laughs> they think so. <laughs> flaming Skulls like flames, and they like skulls. But they're, at least they're not racist. <laughs> All right, so I placed Ansa right on the sea can here. Our shipping container. Ready to All call right. It. Next, I'm going to take Domino, who's my cybered up crazy guy. And uh, I'm going to put him right on the other side of this. Well, I might as well put him on top of the shipping container, because why not? All right. Um, let's see. I will keep. Hmm, this is a tough decision. I think Mormagul. Yeah. Good old friendly Mormagul. <laughs> He's having a rough day. <laughs> oh, he does fit right in there. He's going right in there. All right. 
Uh, I have Singe. Uh, oh, I, you know what I should have done? I think don't do turrets or drones deploy with their masters. I thought they just had to be within 12 inches. Of what okay, well then, then I won't bother with that. Uh, so I'm going to take Singe, who's my sneaky uh, goblin, and I'm going to put her, uh, can I? Right on the inside of this. I don't know, it looks like a, it reminds me of a drive-in bank or maybe a gas oh, station. Yeah. It's supposed to be a gas station. There you go. Uh, yeah. My modeling skills aren't up to par exactly. I don't know, man. This is this is pretty dope for for not being a professional at this. For for it being free, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, now Acid here, he is my rookie with a baseball bat. Uh, he's going to go hide right behind his uh, favorite friend, uh, but not upside down. Acid is a is a poor substitute for Mormagool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, he's just going to snuggle in close. And I have a turret that I'm going to stick right here giving me, hopefully, as good range as I can get. Or actually, maybe, would a turret be better where Domino is? Uh, does that be 12 inches from... Oh, that's right, yeah. So maybe spur. right there is fine. Yeah, there's my turret. No, no model yet for the turret. Yeah, so, I mean, you might want to consider putting it behind the barrier so it can still get cover. But I mean, if you don't right. want, no, it's it's a it's a taller it. model. Like I said, it's it's hard to it's hard to see. But yeah, you're, you're right. It is actually technically taller than the than the uh, barricade. All right, not to tell you what to do or anything. It's all right. Please tell me what to do. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take my breach fly uh, sting. So breach fly is like a extending hacker thing. So my hacker Mordo can hack uh, or Ex run exploits and breach things through uh, my breach fly. Uh, however, breach flies have no defense, no resistance to damage, and one hit point, known as brawn. Uh, so anyone who just wants to take their pistol or baseball bat can just kill them easily. All right, and the last, uh, certainly not least, is Char, who is our wonderful gutter witch. And I think at the, I don't think I can get reached within too harshly within turn one. So I'm going to take my chances and stick her right next to Vengeance so she can follow and uh, go into battle with him close. All right. Last is my my witch uh, and boss of the gang, Adelante. Uh, she's going to be uh, on the bridge. Uh, looks about right to be six inches. Yeah. There we go. All right. Uh, then what we'll do is after deployment, each player rolls a die, and the player with the highest result will take the first turn. I got a two. So did I. All right. So we roll again. Do this again. Yep. I got another two. So did I. <laughs> um, I got a uh, okay. I got a two again. That's kind of silly. Is yeah, it always giving me problem. twos? Oh yeah, it's not yeah. giving me anything but two. How interesting. What if I throw it? There. Okay, I got six that time. I think that's unintentional. Mine is counting from one to six. Well, now it's working. All right. Oh, it's also rolling the uh, the turret. <laughs> anyway, I got a six on my first roll, so. All right. I need to try and fix mine because it doesn't actually want to work as a dice, um, which uh, kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, 
Oh, now it does. Look at that. Let me fix that quickly. I will put that bad boy right back in there. Oh, doesn't work. All right, now it's rolling. Uh, I got a six. <laughs> okay. We're, we'll, we'll get this right here in a second. One. Okay, beat that. Hey. Ow. All right. Um... Are you oh, serious? Yes. A five. This is the and worst gameplay video of all time. Six. Six. There we go. <laughs> <Okay>. Finally. <laughs> all right. Now what we're going to do, and uh, this is kind of like the first rollout of this mechanic, uh, but we are going to divvy out our grit pool. Um, each gang starts this scenario with 16 grit modified by any gang abilities that might give you uh, various amounts of grit. Um, in this scenario, each player loses three grit at the end of each turn. So uh, you have to take care to not waste your grit because when your grit goes away, you lose the game. Uh, whenever you defeat an enemy model, whenever you, uh, you gain grit equal to the model's rank, um, and a rank is either rookie, which is one, a soldier versus two, an enforcer is three and a boss is four. And when one of your models is defeated, you lose grit equal to the model's rank. So if if you uh, if you kill the opponent's boss, they will lose four grit and you will gain four grit. That's a swing of, of eight grit. And then when you uh, run out of grit, uh, basically that's the end condition. Last player with any grit remaining wins. Um, if you've defeated all the other uh, enemy models, then you also win as befitting a gang war. So the idea of grit is that's your will to keep fighting. That's that that thing that all gangers have to look within themselves to harness in order to I don't know be the baddest on the streets. And so uh, I'm gonna get 16 grit out of my bag there. What did you say you could push to to stack them up? Uh, G. G. There we go. Move my grit pool back. <laughs> There's a way to do this. You have to press and hold and wait a while. Press and then hold. There we go. All right. Yeah, so I've got all my grit. Um, uh, don't you get three extra? Oh, that's right. That's right. Some of my I took some options for my gang that allow me to uh, get three more grit. So I start with three extra grit. Uh, and your, your... Zero. Yeah, you start with zero extra grit, but the Valkyrs have some ways that they can gain grit along the way. Also, if you control a Cyberlink, a Clink, uh, with, your, with your Breacher model, then every turn you control it, you'll get an extra grit as well. Yep. So having said that, uh, I don't think there's anything more in this scenario specifics. So we will get started. And for my first go, I am going to choose Spur. And uh, every model, um, every model gets a main action and a movement action on their turn. Uh, and when every model has taken their turn, the round ends. So my first model to move this round will be Spur. And I believe, what, how do you do the, the measurements? Is it... Um, uh, pick it up and then press tab. Press tab and it'll tell me how many I move. Uh, Spur has a speed of four. So I'm going to move him four inches. Uh, that seems really Spur small. should have more. Also, it's currently your rulers at the top of the. Uh, oh, it's like man, that seems like it seems really. Yeah, just drop him back down, and then pick him up again, or where he was. Oh man, I'm Hit failing. F one to go back to pointer. F one, drag him back here. There we go. Then pick him up, tab. And there we go. That's better. So now I'm four inches closer. Um, actually, he should have a five. I think your rules are a little out of date. Because the All starting right. point is five speed. 
Well, I am I am uh, going off of an earlier edition. It shouldn't affect our game too much. But, uh, for my purposes, I've taken my movement action and move, uh, moved closer to the clink. And now I'm going to do what's called breaching. Uh, since Spur is a breacher, this is a neutral clink, which means it's not controlled by anybody. And so I'm going to have to roll at least a 5 plus on my breach die in order to gain control of this neutral clink. Um, in order to breach it, I'm going to roll two times my tech, and my tech is two with, uh, with spur. So I'm gonna get four dice. And you said F1, right? To go back to the, F1 there we go. Yep. So four dice, and roll these four dice, and I need uh, if I was further away, that would take away the number of dice. Every inch away, that would take an, a dice away. But since I don't, uh, since I'm not that far away, I'm going to roll all these dice, and all I need is a 5 plus in order to gain control. And that looks like I have at least one. So now I have control of this clink. So I'm going to take my control token and put it right there on the cyberlink. There we go. And that is my turn with Spur. And now it is Apathy's turn to take one of his models. Indeed. So, um, Mordo is going to have to, uh, he's climbing over this barrier here, so that's going to take an inch of movement to climb up, and then he gets to keep moving. Um, so Mordo will uh, only get effectively six inches of movement, even though he has a normal seven. He's going to go... Oops. I need to redo that. I need to move my breach fly first. If that's okay. Sure. With me canceling turns. <laughs> it's a friendly game. There's no, there's no prize support involved yet. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have to get a judge involved. <laughs> All right. So my breach fly uh, has a speed of seven as well. He's going to fly, gonna fly right down here, um, on top of this wall here, if possible. There you go. Perfect. And you can see that the breach fly, um, which you can use as a sort of antenna to breach, is now basically an inch or two away from the cyberlink. I would say it's just over an inch. Yep. Um, but. Uh, actually, I can double move with it, so I, I can't breach on its turn. It has to be on Mordo's turn. Yep. So, um, but as long as he's be... within what is it, twelve inches, right? Yeah, whatever his breach range is. So his is twelve. So from so there he could. That gives him a perfect place to breach that cyberlink without actually getting any close to it. Getting close That's to correct. it. Correct. Perfect. Um, now, my breach fly isn't taking any other actions because he can't. So it's your turn, good sir. Actually, before I forget. We have these lovely move tokens. These triangles here. Ooh. If I can pick them up. There we go. And we can just put that triangle next to the model or on top of the model to mark them as moved. All right, I'm gonna take my, there we go. Fancy. All right. Uh, I'm going to use my second uh, soldier, who is Snapper. She carries a troll gun with a range of 18, which I don't think is going to get me quite into range of anybody yet. That's just about this barrier on my side. Yep. But I just had <laughs> I just had a silly idea that I'm going to I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to take her and that's to cross that barrier. That's going to take, uh, one inch was one inch. Climb up. Yeah. So I'm at minus one and she's got a speed of, I imagine six. It's supposed to be six. Yeah. yeah. So she's going to move 
Oh, I thought I could I could get to where I could reach the breach fly, <laughs> but I can't. Um, so I'll just move ahead to here and see what I can see. Oh, uh, not quite. Oh, uh, not quite. I can't reach anything. Oh, but look at that. I have but, a 24 yeah, But you could get me. <laughs> uh, that sucks. Uh, so uh, I think it's wonderful, personally. <laughs> so what, did, what I'll do instead is I will put her on Overwatch. And that means anything that comes within 18 inches of her, anything that, that uh, ends their turn within 18 inches, she can take a free shot at. Um, in the, oh my goodness, what am I doing with all these arrows? Uh, F1. F1. Um, in this iteration of the rules, uh, rules are changing by the week, by the way, so uh, as playtesting continues on, are we in this, in this iteration, does Overwatch cost grit, or do you get one free? Uh, release updated yesterday you get one for free okay so i don't have to do anything else my main action is essentially overwatch and if anybody ends their turn within 18 inches of snapper i'm gonna get to shoot them um if two or more people enter i could i assume that i can spend a grit and make another overwatch attack on them um but maybe not that was in there that's, at some up, point. That's up, <laughs> that's up in the air right now for rules. That's being clarified. Okay, so if it's cool, then I can do it in this game. Yes. In, yeah, <laughs> and if it's and if it's um, and if it's uh, if it's overwhelming and awesome, then I can do it, and then we'll take it out of the rules for later. So, <laughs> um, so snappers um, like a class pyramid for suppressor does have the ability to unlock more of them, so that she could get more. Ah, so gotcha. It's really up to debate is can you get more with grit or is it only if it's um that makes sense? Yes, it does. Uh every every character and every gang has a a pyramid um of of I don't know, we'll call it a pyramid of coolness for now. Uh, that they get to spend points and become greater than they are. And again, we'll talk about that more in the gang creation and the model creation videos soon. But for now, just know that if I had taken different options, maybe I'd be in a different position right now. Maybe. Um, so Mordo, like I was supposed to do last turn, but decided last second not to, is going to move over here. Yeah, you better get it done because I'm gonna kill that breach fly. <laughs> ah, great. Come on, over here. I there's a little bit of lag on my end, so he jumps around a little bit more than I was expecting. No problem. Uh, so he's gonna move there. Um, that's roughly six inches, and then he's going to use the breach fly to hack. Um, however, I only get three dice. He's also a soldier with a tech of two. Hmm. Um, but the breach fly is too far away. Ah, so it's more than an inch away. That's right. Yeah. So I get my three dice. I think you have to move them out of the uh, starting area. That's That might be the problem. And I have... Oh! Zero fives. Which means... Um, this is now crashed. So if you don't roll at least one five when you're trying to breach, it crashes it? That is correct. Oh, man. Um, and can you explain to us what crashed means? Uh, yeah, as soon as I get this token on or while I'm doing it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so crashed means, um, so these, the cyberlinks, right? They're owned by the big corporations and um, they don't want you stealing their stuff. I mean, rightfully so, you know, capitalism and whatnot. Um, well, I'm not even capitalist. No one wants their stuff stolen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, crash means that it is in like lockdown mode. The security of it is enabled because um, somebody's trying to break it or steal stuff from it or do something. Um, a red crash means uh, security is enabled and it's going to be shooting every turn at the nearest um, non-drone 
model. So not only is it is it in lockdown and you can't use it again, or you can't or you can't um, uh, slide into it easily, but it's going to start actively being hostile towards you with with weapons. That's correct. It turns into um, a sort of gun drone to attack. It has you. A, it has its little gun on it, like a little pistol. I like to imagine really cartoony with like a pistol. With, that, with like a, a cyber, like a, a stick cyber <laughs> arm that just goes choo, choo, choo. <laughs> yes. um, You know, it's probably not at all what it would be, but. Well, maybe now know. it is. Now it's a refrigerator with a, with a, <laughs> with a metal stick arm that shoots a pistol. <laughs> uh, um, but it also has like a little cattle prod on it. So if you get too close, it will also zap you. Nice. Um, which I like to think of as R2-D2, little zap stick that he does with people uh, when he gets angry. Perfect. Um, but uh, that's Mordo's turn. Um, now you can, right, so this red on top with it being red, mm -hmm. uh, that means security is enabled. While it's crashed, you cannot really do anything with it. You can still try and take control of it uh, to disable the security, uh, but um, to disable security, it would be blue token, blue side up. And the okay. blue side up just means no security, it's friendly, the repairman can come up and fix it and put it back into okay mode, but uh, take putting the repairman in takes a lot longer than a single combat. So uh, it just doesn't. So it's crashed. It's just crash crashed. It's crash crashed right now. It's crash crashed and it's going to start shooting at anyone. With but like you can, now, not, you, can, you can not gain control of that for the rest of the game, right? No, I can gain control of it, but it will never give someone grit. Okay, gotcha. Right, so it's never going to do what you needed to do for the rest of the game. Correct. Uh, but you, you can you can turn it off so it's not not shooting at you anymore. Yes. Yeah. So if it like if you decided to hunker up in here, you could try and take control of it and turn it off. Um, but I mean, it's also really easy to turn back on. So. It's closer to you than it is to me, so I'm just gonna let it shoot okay. at you. I think that's a good that's a good one. Ah, maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, I'm going to. I'm going to take Singe here, and I'm going to move her out five inches, right behind a nice brick wall. Actually, she's going to, let's see, that's uh, nine, nine inches there, and then... Well, that's it. She's just going to move basically right there. Oh, yeah, as a double move. Yeah, as a double move. She's going to trade her... Um, she's going to trade her main action into a move action and just get a better position there. And that's it. That's her turn. Okay. Oh, I forgot to put my token on Mordo. My bad. Um, all right. Um... Because I can, Snapper here, or Sparrow, my bad. My Sparrow is going to shoot your Snapper, because that is well within range. That's like a, that's an iconic thing right there. She's just hanging out on top of the rooftop, just getting ready to take a shot. That's right. So uh, Sparrow, with her sniper rifle, is going to uh, aim. Now, elves have a special ability where if they use their... So aiming is a move action. I should clarify that. And... Elves have a special action called Nimble, uh, at least in this version of the build, where if they use their move action to do anything but move, they can move one inch. So nice. I'm, I'm just going to move up over to here to get a little bit closer, because why not? Because <laughs> you ruined the aesthetic of it. All right, there we go. Um, and then uh, she's going to aim. Sniper rifles are an accurate weapon, so normally an aim gives you plus two to your die roll, uh, but accurate adds plus four instead. So she normally would get eight on a normal shot, but instead this will be plus four of 12 dice. Should I drop those there. Uh, so any of these that are a five or higher means I deal one damage, uh, but... Uh, Snapper's defense will negate that. Uh, but I do have armor piercing one on this roll. All right, so let's take a moment. Uh, this is our first combat of uh, our first actual combat 
attack. So let's let's take a minute and go back over this. So each model has its own prowess, right? Uh, which is basically their, their speed or their ability to attack. And then each weapon has a prowess associated with it as well, like how many attacks it uh, allows you to have. So you said the prowess on Sparrow total with, with her innate prowess and the weapon is how many? Uh, eight. Eight. Uh, yes. And then... Well, that's more than eight dice. One, two, three. Uh, aiming. Aiming, that's She's right. Aiming. She gets an additional plus four. There you go. So when you aim, you get an additional plus four. Uh, he's going to roll all these, and then she's got uh, her her ballistic score, uh, which is five plus, I believe you said? That's correct. So any of these dice that are five or more will be hits. And how many did you get? There's one step before that. Okay. Um, because she has the sharpshooter class, she can re-roll one die when aiming. Gotcha. So that one gets rolled. Cool. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so total here is, I believe, one, two, three, four, five hits. Okay. So that's five hits. Five so hits. I have AP, AP one on this attack. So armor penetration one on this attack. And what does armor penetration do? Uh, so if you were to have a defense of, say, three, my armor penetration now sets your defense to two. All right. Uh, so but if you had zero defense then armor penetration does not. My defense is one, so your armor penetration negates my defense, which means I take the full five, uh, five damage from that. My brawn is seven, so I end up with two brawn at the end. That was a painful, painful attack, and it probably would have killed almost everybody else on my team, but Snapper is, uh, is quite... A, a beast so she was able to handle it and I say handle it she's not dead but she's she's hurting handle it with air quotes yes <laughs> she was able to not die yeah um, so with this build there's a bit of a problem with um, specifically Sparrow she's a little strong for a rookie uh, and her sniper rifle because uh, she just is. Because sniper rifles uh, are pretty awesome. I think we should probably gate sniper rifle behind some sort of... Um... It currently is gated, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, if you spend uh, enough money on Sparrow, <laughs> then, then she'll be able to yes. shoot a sniper rifle. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Let's let's do it. It's not the end of the All world. Right, so that's Sparrow's turn. Uh, you're up. All right. I'm going to take Domino. And he's a crazy guy. So he's going to do something crazy, and first, he's going to jump down off of this thing, which is about three inches, right? Uh, Are these meant to be three inches? 2.5 high. 2.5? 2.4, 2.5. All right, so he's he's already spent 2.5 of his, of his eight speed, which I think you said all of her speeds are bumped up by one. Uh, He's a human, so it would be default six plus three from his cyber legs would be nine. Okay, so I did that right. So he's got six and a half left. And he's going to march up there and not actually taunt Adelante, but but existentially taunt Adelante. Uh, actually, maybe he will because he doesn't have... Uh, I don't think he has a weapon that'll reach that far, so I will just keep going. And get way... Oh, wait, no, that'll put me in range of the... Uh, oh, please do. Of please the clink. <laughs> so, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay... Uh, well, you wouldn't have line of sight. The clink wouldn't be able to see you. Okay, so maybe I will then. Let's go up here. And my rookie is up there, and he's going to taunt your boss, saying, Ha ha, Adelante, come and fight me. I mean, and that's my turn. I guess. I guess that's something you could do. My thought is, if you're fighting uh, Domino, then you're not doing something else cool. <laughs> I think oh, that don't worry. I think that Domino is a waste of your abilities. But but please. Oh yeah, don't worry. I I have another plan. Uh, <laughs> Ansa here, my Air Yojin. Um, 
You can probably better explain what an air yojin is. Uh, in our game, uh, yojin, and I, and I hate to be so crassly comparative, but um, they're a little bit like Jedi. They are um, physical. Uh, they're, they're physical magicians. They are able to do great feats that channel magic internally. They draw from their internal magic, and they're able to do uh, great feats. So they're the the brilliant martial artists. They're the ones who can do amazing things. They're the monks. They're the ones who uh, are generally more in harmony with uh, the world around them and themselves. And this air yojin is basically uh, a yojin that has decided to um, to channel that in one of the five ways um, which follow uh, well, like air, fire, wind, no, air, fire, water, and earth, and void. So she is a follower of the wind, which gives her uh, sort of special abilities in that direction. Super fast, speedy person. Uh, so yeah, she's going to, uh, so one of the abilities that she gets is flight. So all movement as, is treated as flight, but she must end all movement on solid ground. So she is going to first fly up to, actually, you know what? I need to put her back here. Get my camera in the right spot so it doesn't uh, zip around everywhere. All right. All right. So she's going to, oops. There we go. Uh, fly up to here. So that's two inches there. She has an eight inch move. She's going to go here. <laughs> yeah, tables off some layers are a little tough to use at times. Uh, so from here, there. And she's going to fly over to, say, that looks good to me. So that'd be three, four, five, six inches. Mm hmm. Yeah, six, six ish. I should be well within 12 inches of. Yeah, well within. Um, so she moves there. She then takes her dual pistols and um, does a full out attack. So that will be um, this number here that I have is not correct. It should be 12. All right, again, 12. Huh. Uh, 12 at five plus. For those viewing at home, uh, I'm zoomed in on these models, and you can see how you can kind of get the general sense for what they look like. These are our actual models, but they're super low low res um, for use here on Tabletop Simulator because higher res stuff tends to bog it down and, and become complicated. So we got uh, super low poly that, models. The the high res stuff won't even load. Yeah. Like if I were to just drop in the actual. Um, files onto here um it would load into my game but no one else could see them gotcha because it's just too big for like yeah so we um, render them really really low so that we can have models that that get the general gist of our models but they're super low low quality when you when you zoom way in yeah um yeah and the they're not proper low poly um i just took like a decimate tool to kill the number of polygons and merge them to the closest neighbors, uh, making them look not the best, uh, but they get the job done. It looks like uh, like Medusa looked at them and then dropped them in acid. <laughs> but still, they look pretty cool. Alright. Look pretty cool um, on Tabletop Simulator. Yes. So, I roll this. They're at 5+. Plus. And again, AP1. Uh, 1, 2, 3 hits. Yeah. Uh, so three hits against Domino. Domino's got a defensive one, so you've decimated that. And you've taken him down by three brawn. He's still alive. I believe he has four. Yep. Yep. Um, now, normally this would be the end of the turn, but the Valkyr and this build of them have a special ability where I can um, use an interrupt action to give any model a move. So, I'm going to take Ansa here, and she's going to take a move. Right down to here. Uh, let's sit here. Hurry up. So I've used that ability for this turn, and I cannot use it again until next turn. Awesome. So she jumps up there, 
shoots me in the face, and then flies back. Exactly. And your turn. All right, let's see. Let's see what the lay of the land looks like. You haven't really clumped up any of your guys, so I don't think a fireball is going to help me a whole lot. Like I expected you. <laughs> the uh, flaming skulls do love their fireballs. All right, I think she is going to move. I'm going to take Char. I'm going to move her. She's got to move of I think six inches. Uh, she's a human. Yep. Ooh. So behind that wall. And she is going to cast haste on her buddy, Vengeance, who is just behind her. And haste uh, says the target-friendly model may immediately move magic times three inches. And she has a magic of three, so that means he can make an immediate nine-inch move. Um, the boosts for this one says at the cost of one grit, the target friendly model may move an additional distance equal to their speed. And we haven't really used any grit, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to take one of my grit and expend it. You could. You could. Okay. Char also has her demon necklace. Oh, that's right. Give me back my grit. There we go. Uh... Thank you for reminding me. Char has a demon necklace, which allows her to use an ability, a spell ability, to boost a spell ability without using grit. Uh, she can do that three times, I believe. Yes. And so she's going to use one of those. And so Vengeance is going to make a nine-inch move plus, eh, zoom in, plus his speed, which I believe is... Six, because he got a few boosts. So he's going to make a 15-inch move. So first off... Uh, wow, he's not actually good with this build. So that's five inches, and then another 15. Or another 10, excuse me. F1. So that pile of rubble there is supposed to be rough terrain. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll just avoid it. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to go. I don't want to charge into that. Uh, Come on, charge right into that clink. Lightning bolt. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> uh, there we go. And I just don't want to get into the range of that clink either. There we go. Uh, lines block. Line, yeah, so. line set block. All right, so that's Char's turn. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think it is time for Mormagul to do almost nothing. <laughs> um, he has a speed of seven, so he's going to go right <coughs> under the bridge here. Uh, now, he could do a double, but instead, um, oh, no, this version is different. Great. I don't know what you're thinking, so I can't comment on that. <laughs> no, no, I was um, thinking of an older build where I could just gain one grit right now, but I don't have that. Oh, just by doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's been removed. Ugh. Um... So Mormagul right here is ideally who I want Vengeance to be in conflict with. Not because it's an easy win, but because it's not an easy win. Uh, Vengeance and Mormagul have a sort of rivalry, and they're both super badass uh, physical combat warriors, and so I love when they get into melee with each other. It's always a crapshoot as to who's going to win. <laughs> Alright, so I'm actually going to move Mormagul, double move. Right under the 
Right under the bridge. That's where my mongol's gonna go. Under the bridge downtown. That's where more Moogle went. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's Mormogul's turn. All right. You haven't moved Adelante yet, have you? That's correct. Adelante and Acid are my two models I have not moved. Well, then watch me do nothing. <laughs> uh, my turret is going to go on Overwatch. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Your turn. All right. Good old... Move Acid. <laughs> acid is going to... He just has a 7 speed. Yeah, 7 speed. Um, going to go up with his buddy, Mormogul, right up behind. Um, yeah, kind of hiding. Come on. It's uh, a little tough move under bridges and stuff. Uh, but that's Acid's turn. Alright. Let's see. <laughs> what do I want to do with with Vengeance? Um, vengeance is a fire Yojin, which means he uh, is also magical uh, and the fire bit of him manifests itself in extra beatdown ability. And what I want to do is somehow get into conflict with Mormagool. And I have an ability called Shadow Slide, which would allow me to sort of fly in there. Uh, Reread the new Shadow Slide. Been Has it changed in the, in the last day or two? Yesterday, I think. Okay, I can make an additional movement action with speed equal to magic times two and gaining the flight keyword. So it's not what I wanted to do. That's poopy. Uh, it used to be you could just go through buildings and stuff, which was fun. Um, oh, so that was the intent? Yeah, that's like okay. a sh you know, shadow slide. You should sl because slide through shadows. Sure, I thought that was the intent. But then I read <laughs> it one day and it was just said flight. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. So, yeah, we, we can move that back. <laughs> and, a, and a build, sure. Uh, because I liked that, because it was yeah, amazing. Yeah, going going through buildings to, to charge things was, was fun. But we'll use it as written right now, and we'll we'll have fun with it, because it doesn't affect the, the way that we get the gameplay out. Um, but what I want to do... Hmm. Actually, I'm not going to do that. Uh, he has a speed of six. Can I get... No, I won't be able to get into combat unless I do that. Hmm. I was really hoping I could get a barrage in, but that's not going to work either. That would be deadly. Too bad I can't do both. Yeah, Shadow Slide is a... Main action. So instead, you know what? What I'll do is I will, um, I will just use Shadow Slide. Um, actually, let me do this instead. I'm gonna move, take my move action with Vengeance, and I'm gonna move, move him uh, two and a half inches this way, and then. The rest of his movement, uh, two and a half, I can't count, four, nope, three and a half. It's not letting me pick him up. Uh, you have to grab the base. There we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's reasons for that. So that if you, uh, I'll show you if you like that, flip it over. That's crazy. That means you can't grab the top. Um, so I believe that's your turn then. Yes, but I haven't actually done my main action yet. Oh, that's correct. So I just did that, and now I'm going to, um, oh, look at that, at the boost. Shadow side, the model may choose to use their movement action as part of this action 
if they don't take a minus four penalty on the charge. Uh, well, I've already moved. Okay, so I'm going to use Shadow Slide right now um, and boost it with two grit. And that's going to allow me to treat it as a charge with all relevant rules applying. So that means I am how far away? Uh, six five, inches. Six inches, yeah. All right. So the way that charge works is you get... Uh, you basically take your your prowess, and then for every inch away f the, from the the character you're charging, you lose a prowess. Um, so with shadow slide, go ahead. There's also a minus four with this release on top of that because you've used your move action to move. Okay. Um, so minus four. Pro, prowess on the charge. Um, at the cost of one grit, model may treat speed for this action as their normal speed plus... Okay, so I would have thought about that earlier. I would have been. So basically, you um, when you're charging, you get your speed added to your prowess as well. So in this case, uh, Vengeance's prowess total on this charge is going to be five plus... Uh, oh, no, not five, six... Plus his prowess, um, he's going to be using his offhand weapons, uh, his double axes, that is. So he's going to have 16 prowess. His um, close combat ability is going to suffer a little bit, but I think the 16 uh, attacks is worth it. So 16 plus his speed is 22, and then take the penalty for using Shadow Slide to charge, which will make him have 18, which is still pretty healthy. Um, it's not letting me do that very elegantly, so we'll just say they're in base to base, so we don't have to fiddle with it. Is that reasonable? Uh, they don't have to be base to base anymore. The new reach rules. <laughs> See, things change so so quickly. Um, okay, so either way, I'm going to get into close combat with Mormagul, and I'm going to attack him. Uh, I moved. Uh, shoot, I forgot to see how many I moved. You move six. I move six. Okay. Brr. So six uh, minus the 18. So I'm going to have 12 attacks on him. Uh, Mormogul is going to spend a grit and parry. Which reminds me, take these two grit that I just spent and get rid of them. All right, I'm going to roll my dice, and I need a 4 plus to hit. Uh, and he's going to spend a grit and parry, which means he's going to make an attack as well. And if he gets more hits on his attack than I get on mine, then the attack fails, and he might even do some damage back to me. Uh, that parry's been... <laughs> All righty. <laughs> uh, see, this is the, the the good thing about having smarter people than you work on your game. Here we go. Oh, they went everywhere. Uh oh. Goodness. All right. So let's see. I got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh man, crushed. Uh, Mormagul does have 14 at 3 plus on this, so um, that probably helped. So that shadow slide was not the best idea. It was a waste of grit, and there it is. Uh, it made me lose one. So yeah, that's true. The end of the world. <laughs> All right. Well, that's my turn. Radio. Uh, that means I have Adelante left, and. Hmm. Oh, I forgot. I should have nullified or something. Um. I need to read up on stun. Is that a ranged attack? Do, 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 do. Let's see. Stun is uh, range magic times two plus six. You know what? I think I'm just gonna lightning bolt 
and risk hurting uh risk hurting Mormigul. Because why not? And why would that be a risk uh for Mormigul? Uh sorry, because um they're in melee right now. Right. So that means if I make a ranged attack while there's two models in melee and I don't aim, you cannot aim on spells. Um then I have a chance of any roll of a one on any of the dice will hit any model but the target. So since I'm targeting Vengeance, it's going to target Mormagool instead. Yeah, so any ones you roll would hit Mormagool instead. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, magic, Lightning Bolt. Let me see if I can find it quickly. I should have written this down. Uh, so well within range. First move uh, just to the side here. Make sure there's line of sight. And now six inches. Plenty close. Um, so lightning bolts. I will be doing two grit, but Adelante has a special item, which the Rod of Rog, or Rog, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, where there's a free boost on all spells cast that she casts. Um, so it's only going to cost me one grit. And I deal uh, 16 dice of damage. Woo-wee! Which could really mess up Mormagool too. Sometimes you have to take risks in life. <laughs> Especially when it's not your own life on the line. Um, Alright, so first I'm going to pull out the ones. Yeah, there we go. And this was actually a really bad roll, but all right, I have three ones here. Uh, actually, before I forget, one grit. Spent. There we go. Uh, so she has a ballistics on uh, ranged on magic of uh, three plus. So these ones here don't hit. And that one there doesn't hit. But because of that, I am going to take these dice here. I'm going to re-roll them. I'm going to spend a grit to get re-rolls. So that is one of the abilities you can use for grit. Is get a number of re-rolls equal to your rank. So see this here up now let's see if i can get some more hits well one state of one um, nice and i'll keep with that that's a pretty good use of grit right there yep all right so that means one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve hits against um vengeance yo now there's actually one thing we haven't ironed out so Mormagul has a defense of four, so that one damage doesn't do anything because it just gets stopped by the defense. Hmm. Right? Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. Okay. Good. I believe so. That makes. I. I. I think. Unless I we, yeah, you're right. We haven't magic. talked about it because it's magic. Yeah. Yeah, magic is weird. We haven't dealt with it directly. Um, yeah, that's my guess. We'll uh, figure it out in playtesting. But, right. um, but so, for but for now, we'll just say that that uh, his defense works against against magic. Perfect. And how many was that against you? Twelve. Uh, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah and well, my you... defense is three. Is there any armor piercing or armor penetration? No armor piercing on this. No. All right. So take three away from that, and we're down to nine. And there's just. Oh, I have an Aegis save, which we haven't done any of that recently, so um, I will have to, I will get a chance to defend against all of those. So I'm going to take nine dice and roll these, and any of these that come up, my Aegis saves uh, are five plus, so any of these that are five or above are negated. And that is one, two, three... So three of those are negated, down to six, and I have a seven brawn, so I'm amazingly still alive. <laughs> amazingly, yes. <laughs> and that, I believe, would end your turn and thus the round. That is correct. Uh, you do have a brawn counter over here on the side that you might want to update. Oh, cool. I didn't see that. 
So seven would get ticked down to one on the top one. Did you mouse over it? Nope. One. Ah. One. And uh, I'll, I'll correspond those to people here in a bit. Perfect. All right. Uh, so now we take off. Yeah, that is my turn. I believe that is every model here. So we now remove our uh, move tokens. And for those watching at home, that is a uh, gameplay video of a, a complete round of Gangs of the Undercity. We're going to continue playing, but just in case I'll cut this video up, that is uh, a gameplay video of a round. Thanks for playing. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. <laughs>